let's talk about the varroa mite. Specifically, how we can lower our mite levels so you understand how to help your bees. I created a tool for you to help you understand when you should be putting a treatment in versus when you can just use integrated pest management methods to keep your mite levels low. And if you should be putting in a treatment, what your organic, plant-derived, and synthetic options are based off of what's going on in your beehive at that moment. I made a tool for you that I, essentially it's the equivalent of you just emailing me and saying, Larissa, this is what my beehive's going through. This is what it looks like. This is what's in the hive. This is the outside daytime temperatures. And it asks you all the questions I would ask you, and then it gives you the answer that I would probably give you. Open up a second window on your computer, pause this video, go to beekeepingmadesimple.com slash Varroa. Welcome back. Now that you have the tool open, the first step is to answer question number one, which is colony season assessment. This is asking you what your beehive is going through at the time. Is it in a state of growth? Which is often what we will describe as springtime. The hive is growing, the population is increasing, you might see bees building comb, but the hive is still small. And so if you are not sure which stage your beehive is in, if you scroll down to the bottom of a page, you will see a link that says, click here to learn more about each season and which segment your bees are currently in. And when you go to that link to look at the description of all these stages, you will see photos to go along with these descriptions. And so to the best of your ability, fill out what stage you think your beehive is in at this moment. The next question, step two, is your mite count assessment. Here I am asking you if you did a mite test or not. If you could know your mite count because you did a mite test on at least one of the hives in your apiary in the last month, then click, yes, I tested, I know my mite count. Or you can click, no, I didn't test, I don't know my mite count. If you click, yes, I tested, then it's going, there's going to be a box below it that appears to ask you what that mite count was. And this mite count is going to be based off of doing a mite test where you gathered a half a cup of bees, which is going to be roughly 300 honeybees, and gathered a varroa mite test. This can be using alcohol wash or people use windshield washer fluid or put liquid dish soap with water, or it can be using powdered sugar. However, in this mite count, um, you I don't recommend answering this question if you use something like a sticky board because those are not accurate at all. I have no idea why people give them sell them or put them in with their beehive packages, they are useless. Uh, really, they're, they're worse than useless. They give people the impression that they know their mite count when it's actually incorrect. And so that's even worse than it not working. <laughs> if you don't have your mite count, that is okay. And there will be further things that I talk about because you know, sometimes your beehive population is low and you're not gonna have a mite count or your hive is dormant and you're not gonna be able to do a mite count. Uh, so you don't have to make anything up. There's going to be more instructions about what to do depending on the season your bees are in and whether you know your mite count or not. The third question is, asking you if there are honey supers present. Now this is, do you have honey supers on your hive for harvesting? Because if you have a super on your hive, but this super is not um, for harvesting, but the super you are leaving on the hive for winter, for the dormant phase, for them to feed off of, or if you are in a warm climate, this is just your feed honey. Uh, if you have that on there before you treat, always put some kind of marking on the bars or the frames so that you know that this is just feed honey and a treatment was put in at the time, organic or not. Uh, but it asks you if there are honey supers on for that you plan on harvesting. If these supers are on, but you do not plan to harvest them or, or aren't for consumption, then you're going to click no. 
The next question is the temperature. So we want to know what the average daytime temperature is for your bees. And really, it's not even what the daytime temperature was today, but it's better to actually look at what the daytime temperature is in the coming days so that you have an idea of what the temperature is going to be like when you're actually putting a treatment in. And really, the point of this is to better explain to you what treatments are best this time of year because some have temperature restrictions. Formic acid has uh, probably the greatest restriction. You can't put it in if the daytime temperatures are above 85 Fahrenheit those first three days it's in the hive. Apigard also has temperature restrictions but not as high. I think it can be like a little over 100 degrees Fahrenheit in the daytime. But it has, but you know, for the time that it's in the hive, not just the first three days. So that's really, and of course there are temperature restrictions for how cold it is. You can't put certain treatments in the hive if it's, you know, so cold out that the bees are, are clustered up. Next is their brood in the hive. Um, even if you're seeing a small amount of brood, if there is still brood in the hive, then click yes. If there's no brood present, then that's just, uh, you know, usually if you just first bought a package of bees and your queen's just maybe starting to lay, but there's no kept pupa, or at the very end of the season and you're seeing absolutely no brood present, then you can just use oxalic acid dribble method or vaporization once and you're good. Uh, so if there is brood present, even if it's a small amount, then you're going to want to click yes for this. Question six is about your climate. Are you in a cold climate where you have temperatures that are below 50 degrees Fahrenheit out consistently day after day for weeks? Or are you in a warm climate where, you know, the bees aren't ever clustering up? And the reason why I ask this is because I treated my beehives differently in warm climates versus cold climates. You can't have a much, much higher mite load in a beehive if it's not going to be entering a dormant phase. Because in that dormant phase, you just, the bees need to be incredibly healthy because the queen's laying eggs for the winter bees. And those bees need to be able to cluster up and produce heat and if they are weak, if they are full of viruses, then the hive dies pretty early on into the winter time. In warmer climates, they are not going to go through that stress because that winter time, that cold winter is very stressful for the bees and they need to be incredibly healthy. And that's why people want mite levels of zero or one when the winter bees are are uh, in that larva and pupa stage. But for warm climates, you don't need a mite level of zero or one. Uh, it, it's okay, you, you can usually deal with having higher mite levels. Uh, and for me, I usually treat it just once in that late season phase before the next, uh, you know, start of the growth peak season really came. But also for those warm climates, your peak season is very long and you want to avoid treating during your peak season. So usually you want to treat very close to when that peak season starts so that you don't have to um, treat when honey is in the beehive. And then step seven is your treatment recommendations. When no treatment is recommended, I usually have at the bottom a preventative, preventative measure of drone comb removal, which is the act of putting in uh, frames with green foundation that are for drones, or putting in frames that have no foundation and letting your bees build comb, whatever size they want and they will make drones if they want to. Then when the drones are capped and they are in the pupa stage, that's when you can freeze it to kill the varroa mites. The treatment options that I have included in this are Apigard, which I've listed as a non-organic but naturally plant-derived treatment. 
There is Formic Pro, which are patties that are have formic acid in them, which is organic. Might away quick strips do not exist anymore. They are not sold. And if you see anyone selling them, there's a good chance that they have expired already. There is um, Baroxan, which is the extended release oxalic acid strips. I have oxalic acid dribble method, oxalic acid vaporization method, and Apovar. Though I do also include that Apovar is not the ideal recommendation almost any time because there has been considerable varroa mite resistance to the primary ingredient in it, which is Amitraz, and that it is a synthetic treatment. In this um, tool, and at the bottom are more ways to learn more about varroa mites. I have this chart that I made that lists all the mite treatment options and just has in a chart form temperature restrictions, best season to use it and to not use it, pros and cons, if you prefer just looking at it that way. Don't forget to read the manufacturer's directions, take proper safety precautions, and I recommend using the dosage that they have listed on the package. Too much of a treatment is never good for the bees, but too little is going to make it not effective enough. So I hope this helps you if while you are figuring out what to do about your varroa mites. And of course, you know, I'm not perfect and I tried my best to go through every single possible scenario when doing this. But if you go through this tool and you found that the way you answered the questions, the recommendation I gave you did not make sense, please let me know and leave it in the comments. I ask that everyone be polite to each other and to me because we are all just humans but I can very easily alter things. Uh, it's very helpful to have all of you to keep me on my toes and to let me know when um, there are any discrepancies so that I can make these changes and we can help everybody understand how to deal with rural mites and how to use these treatments. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out my other videos about how to do a mite test and how to use some of these treatments.